So the first thing we're going to do is kind of do a grounding exercise. So uh, in theater and performance, uh, grounding is so important just because we want to be able to act from a place of centeredness, calmness, and just like this sense of overall, overall well-being. Um, so uh, if you're sitting, uh, sit in a comfortable position. You can also stand if you want to. Um, and just like from where you are, shift your attention into your body and just get a sense of what you're feeling, where your body's at. Maybe if you notice any tension and notice any sounds that you hear, notice what you see. And if you want, you can close your eyes or soften your gaze. And we're just gonna pay attention to this present moment. And notice how you're sitting on a chair or whatever you're sitting on. If you're standing, feel your feet on the floor. And just notice how you're being supported by whatever it is whether it's the ground or the chair. And notice your breath. And just notice the inhale and the exhale. And notice where you feel that breath. A lot of acting is about the instrument that we have, which is your voice and your body. So it's really important to just get in tune with how you're feeling physically and also using the breath to center you and ground you. And just notice that the breath kind of just drops into your body and then releasing out. And notice any thoughts that you might be aware of. And just notice that the thoughts are here and your mind might be busy. And just acknowledge that. Just this coming and going, this ebb and flow of thoughts, emotions. And everything is okay. Whatever you're experiencing in this moment is totally okay. And as actors and as theater artists, our thoughts and emotions and whatever we're experiencing in this moment, they're all valuable in helping us create, helping us express, helping us tell our stories. And notice any, any desires to, to kind of be somewhere else other than right here and right now. And just notice that. Acknowledge it and come back to your breath. Now, think of a word or allow a word to come to you 
that describes your present experience in this very moment. It could be a feeling word like boredom or excitement, happy, or it could be a word that's not necessarily a feeling word. It could be It could be maybe you're thinking of the word pizza in that field. Or mud or concrete or the sky. So just Allow a word to come to you that encapsulates how you feel in this very moment. I think a word that's coming to me right now is busy. So just allow that word to sit in your body notice how that feels in your body and by embracing the word by acknowledging it how does your body react and now imagine you're on a stage you're in a theater and there's a light on you and you're standing on an empty stage in an empty theater and it's just you. Notice in your imagination, how does your body feel as you look out to this empty theater? And now allow another word to come up that encapsulates what it's like for you to be on a stage in an empty theater. What word describes your experience right now? Now imagine there are people coming in to the theater and there are people in the audience looking at you. You're still alone on, on an empty stage and now there are people watching you. And it's up to you to decide if you want the theater to be packed or if there, there are just a few people. But notice as you look out and you see them looking at you, notice what feelings are coming up for you. Notice how you're standing. Notice where your breath is. Did it change from when there were no one? And now, allow a word to come up that describes this experience. It could be the same word, or it might be different. But whatever word that's arising for you, just notice it. 
kind of hold it in your body and get a sense of how that lands, how that word makes you feel. And now see what it's like if you say the word, maybe in a whisper or in full volume, say the word and put the word out into space and see what that's like. So if your word is compassion, Just allow the word to carry your inner experience out into the space. And see what that's like. And now once you've done that a couple times, Shift your attention back into your body in this moment. Sitting on a chair or standing, feel your feet on the floor. Sense into your breath and this act of breathing. And notice if your breath has changed. Is it more shallow or is it deeper? Where are you feeling your breath? Is it your chest? Is it your stomach? And just know that whatever you're feeling in this moment, whatever you're experiencing, is totally and completely okay. And this is where you're coming from today in this moment as an artist and as a performer. And there's so much here for you to work with and explore and when you're ready, Feel free to open your eyes if they were closed and come back to the room. And feel free to move around if that feels right. And yeah, I wanna invite you, I wanna invite everyone to kind of just check in with yourself throughout the workshop, but also throughout the day. Just how am I feeling now? What what it's what is my experience now? What am I working with? What do I want to say? What thoughts am I having? And just honor your present experience and work from that place of you, uniqueness and, and personal wealth of materials that you could use in your art, in your performance. So I want you to kind of like keep um, the words that you have kind of noticed and maybe new words are coming up for you and just kind of hold them in your experience as we work through some of the other games and exercises in the workshop because everything that you experience, um, they're all very helpful and that's what makes you unique and special as an artist. Because one, one person might have the word tired and the other person might have the word reality. And that's, it's really compelling to see what kind of art comes from those personal experiences. Um, so I just wanna um, invite you to keep that in mind. So uh, having said that, uh, get out a piece of paper.
get out a piece of paper, a blank sheet, and um, and a writing utensil. It could be pencil, pen, crayons, uh, color pencil, marker. So I'm going to give you maybe like 20 seconds to get that ready. And then we're going to do the next exercise, which is kind of like a creation based exercise. Uh, 10 more seconds, 10 more seconds. So when you're ready, um, make sure that your page is blank. And what we're going to do is you're going to take your writing utensil or drawing utensil, and then you're going to make a shape on the page. I'm gonna make a shape on the page. And this shape should take up about half of the page. Yeah, not too small, but maybe not the whole page. So it could be any shape. It could be a triangle, a square, a circle, and an octagon. Or it could be just like uh, like a cloud type, fluffy shape. Um, whatever shape inspires you today, put that shape on and make sure that's fairly large, but not the entire page. So maybe half a page. Um, and next, you're going to draw another shape. So it could be uh, the same shape if that inspires you, or it could be a different shape. And make sure that this shape is somehow attached. So the first shape and this shape is somehow touching. So it could be one at the top, one at the bottom, or they're side by side, or they're diagonal, whatever, whatever inspires you at this moment. Um, yeah, and feel free to work at your own pace. Um, yeah, and once you have the two shapes and they're touching, in one of the shapes, you are gonna draw a pair of eyes. So it could be like a big bubbly, pair of eyes, or it could be just like two simple dots, but draw a pair of eyes on one of the shapes. And that shape is going to be the face. So feel free to add whatever, uh, whatever else you, you want on the face. Maybe add a mouth. You can add noses or one nose. Um, you could add facial hair if you want, maybe teeth, whatever inspires you and whatever kind of brings you joy and amusement because this is supposed to be fun. So um, once you have the two shapes, um, and you've drawn a face on one of them. The other shape is going to be the body. So uh, you could add arms and legs to the body and then just flush out this character more. So you have the face and then the other shape is the body. And then you could add maybe clothing if you want. Um, maybe your character has more than two arms or more than two legs. 
uh, yeah, just whatever, whatever you feel um, is interesting to you in this moment. And add whatever accessories you want. You can add hats, you can add, maybe your character is wearing a rollerblade or maybe your character is holding uh, like a knitted sweater or a guitar. Um, yeah, I'm gonna give everyone kind of one more minute to finish up their character. And then Once you've done that, um, once you've done that, I want you to look at your character and I want you to give your character a name. So it could be any name and feel free to write the name on your page. Um, it could be, a name like just like Bob it could be a name like Dr. Fuzzy Pants. But make sure that you come up with something that it's interesting to you and kind of makes you happy. And then once you've done that, uh, Think of an animal. So if your character was an animal, what kind of animal would your character be? Or maybe if your character is already an animal, maybe they have the energy of a different animal. So, uh, the kind of energy that your that your character has is it like an elephant is it like a cheetah or like a tiny tiny mouse just look at your character and kind of kind of see allow your character to tell you what kind of energy they have and maybe they're maybe they're contrasting energies. Maybe your character is very big, but, but your character has the energy of a mouse or they're very small, but they, but they move like a dinosaur. So think of, think of an animal that, that uh, your character would embody the energy of. And now, um, come up with something that they would say. What will your character say? What's something that they would say? So a good way of approaching this is just look at your character, look at it on the page, and then just allow that face to talk to you. What would they say or what did they say to you think about that and if you have more than one ideas that's totally fantastic uh feel free to write all of these down so think of a line that your character would say and then feel free to to come up with more if if you want And then now, um, think of how this character is different from you. How is this character different from who you are as a person? And also think about how this character is similar with you. What kind of similarities do you share with your character? 
and feel free to write those down. And once you've done all that, look at your look at what you've written and your character. And kind of just from where you are, sit in a way that your character would sit. How would your character sit? Would they be closed off? Or would they be kind of open? How would your character sit? How would your character sit? Um, would they be tense or would they be relaxed? Uh, and if it inspires you, feel free to move around. Maybe stand as your character and just kind of embody your character and notice how it feels in your body. And you might try different things like you might try tense, we might try relaxed, we might try very frantic energy, or it might be more chill. And just see how, how each of those different, different inspirations feel as an actor for you to embody. And just feel free to play around with different contrast so what is it like to like sit as a mouse how would you be looking at other people is your character very giggly or are they very serious so just really embody your character and you can always go back to the drawing and just look at it and you know reconnect with it and now as you play around with that imagine your character is eating a grape how would they eat a grape Maybe they like grapes, maybe they love grapes, or maybe they, mm, you know, don't care so much about grapes. Or maybe they hate grapes with a passion. So just take a grape and eat the grape as your character. How would they eat it? Would they savor it like really slowly? Or would they just go, oh, how would they react? And play around with that and see how many different ways you could eat the grape. And once you've done that, just kind of check in with yourself as an actor, which one did you enjoy the most as a performer? So just make a note of that. Maybe you were really inspired by embodying your character as an elephant and you were not as inspired when they were uh, a little gerbil maybe you were inspired that um they really lo love grapes or maybe you were in maybe you were even more inspired that they were scared of grapes so, so just make a note 
um, for yourself as a performer um, in terms of, oh, I really enjoyed this. This was really fun for me. And I want to encourage you and kind of invite you to, to lean into those, those aspects of yourself as, uh, as an artist. Because what brings you joy is totally different from what brings uh, someone else joy. And what brings you joy um, is incredibly valuable for you to bring on stage or in an audition room or um, as a performer, just to like bring that joy and your unique ideas and perception and perspective. And all of that is so special and personal and interesting to watch. So I just really wanna emphasize that uh, it's important to just play around with different things and, and see what makes you happy and what inspires you. And having said that, we're gonna do we're gonna do the next exercise. So we're gonna come back to the characters, but for now you can put them aside and then we're gonna go into lines. So you will, I believe you receive uh, like some text. I think Jacob or Fiona can just throw it up on the screen just to remind you um, what the texts were. So, uh, yes, great, perfect. So these are the lines. Are you ready? I can't wait. I got something for you. You're here. Yum. Go for it. Lucky me. Sure. Can I talk to you? Oh, man. All right. So this is what I want you to do. With these lines, with these lines, I want you to come up with a scene. So how many are there? Two, four, six. So there are 10 lines. So maybe take five to eight lines, five to eight lines, and just make a scene with those lines. So maybe the beginning of the scene is you're here. And the second line is go for it. And the third line is lucky me. So arrange, so pick five to eight lines and arrange these lines in a way that is kind of, that, that tells a story and you're creating kind of a mini scene with these five to eight lines. And I'm gonna give you maybe two minutes. And if it inspires you, um, you could take one of the lines that your character said from earlier and add it in. Maybe there's a line that's so perfect for it. So feel free to add it in. Add in the lines of your character. And as you're working, as you're working, as you're working, try saying, try saying lines um, as you're exploring them. So as you're rearranging the lines, you could just try saying them. Lucky me, you know, or can I talk to you? How would you say those lines? And how do the different ways of saying them add different layers of meaning? Uh, one of the question is, um, if you're allowed to use words that aren't included in the list of lines. For now, um, no. But you could include, uh, those words may be in the lines that your character spoke.
Yeah. Um, I know it could be really challenging just because these lines are so, I guess, open-ended and ambiguous. Um, but I think it's a really good question um, to kind of have inspiration to ask certain things, because I think a lot of those things you could add to the performance as an actor. So see, maybe, maybe you want to add a word that could be uh, that could be shown through an action. So think about performance in that way as well. That um, maybe I want to add the word toaster. But maybe uh, I could just bring you a toaster, stuff like that. Uh, can we combine lines? Yeah, sure. You can combine lines. Great question. Feel free to combine lines. Um, yeah, and just make the scene, create the scene in a way that, that again, create the scene in a way that inspires you and that kind of amuse you and make you smile. I think that's really important. Just like things that bring you joy. So there's no right or wrong. There's only um, your art and your expression in this moment. So once you've done that, Read your scene um, once over as yourself. So how would you say the lines that you have chosen? And what are the different ways that you could say those lines? And then um, I'm gonna give you maybe one minute just to like play around with play around with trying different parts and saying different lines so maybe uh in the scene that you have arranged maybe one character is really uh really closed off and the other character is very loud and obnoxious. So try playing both parts. And also what happens if you give the close off lines to the obnoxious character? How would that change the story? And just play around with different ways of saying it. Um, the point of this is to get you to kind of use your imagination and try out different things as an actor and to kind of practice um, different ways of approaching the same line in the same scene and notice how that feels for you in your body. And now um, see what it's like if you were to perform this scene with your character. So what would it be like to perform the scene with your character? So your character could play, your, char your character will say um, some of the lines and then you will say the other half of the lines. Or maybe, um, maybe your scene has more than two people. Whatever feels right, whatever inspiration you have, just try playing that scene with, uh, with your character and see how that feels. And yeah, I'm just going to give you a moment or two to kind of just play around with with uh, 
with your character doing the same. If we had more time and if we had done this workshop in person, I would have paired people up so they, they so then they would use their characters and make a story um, with a partner. So how do you come up with a story with uh, the blob with with the 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 deity? What story would that come come out from those two characters? Like um, I'm always really interested in collaboration and how how taking two seemingly unrelated things and making a story out of that. And that's really interesting to me. Um, so having said that, you could totally do this on your own. So imagine drawing another character and then writing a scene with these two characters or maybe a third character and then just follow your inspiration that way. And that could kind of um, take you places that you might not um, realize that inspired you before and it could be really fun. So I encourage you to do this on your own um, just for fun. And also uh, you can also do this in approaching a script or a text. So let's say if you have a monologue, um, you could draw a character and then do the monologue in that character's voice. Because sometimes if we get too locked in into this is how I think the monologue should be performed, this is how I think the scene should be performed, we kind of lose uh, kind of the freshness of, of um, the performance in a way. So I just uh, want to inspire you to do this on your own and explore your own interests and ideas and what makes you happy. And there, at the end of the day, there, there is no right way or wrong way of, of performing a line or a scene. Um, there is no right or wrong in, in creation. And especially with acting, you could say the line, I'm sure as you were practicing, you could see how you could take one line that's, se that's seemingly so simple and then say it a uh, hundred different ways. 